It's right before Revelation. The book of Jude only has one chapter, and we're going to look at one verse in that chapter and bring the message. Jude, and I'm going to use one verse, one word here that I, I've never preached a sermon on this word and heard one, I think, but we mention it a lot. Now, you'll hear this this morning. I hope that it'll help you. Jude, right before the book of Revelation, the Bible is not only inspired the words, but the books are placed right where God intended for them to be. So it's no accident the book of Jude is right before the book of Revelation. There's so much prophetic stuff in Jude, it's unbelievable. That little 25 chapters of verses is just busting out with prophecy and stuff. Now I want you to look at a verse here in verse 18. One verse, the book of Jude, verse 18. Verse 17 tells you to remember the words of the Lord. Verse 18 says, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. See that word mocker? It said in the last days there would be mockers. Isn't that something? I want to preach this morning on the subject last days mockers. Last days mockers. I don't think anybody who's right with God and studies the Bible would disagree that we're in the last days. Any preacher I know that's worth shooting believes that we're in the last days. Nobody knows when the Lord's coming. We don't know the day or the hour, but it don't take a genius to figure out, look at the world today and see, line it up with the scripture. And the one thing the Lord said would be in the last days would be mockers. So I'm gonna preach a sermon about mockers. Uh, the word mock means to deride or to, to, to laugh at to joke, me and you would say, make fun of. In our southern dialect, that would be making fun of somebody, laughing at somebody. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said in the last days, for some reason, there'd be a bunch of people that just mocked and were mockers. Now, I want to say something about this this morning, and uh, we, we are warned against mocking and against mockers. First thing I want to say this morning is mocking God. How could a little bitty individual speck on this planet mock the creator, God Almighty? Uh, isn't it amazing? Nobody in their right mind, to me, uh, would mock Almighty God. There used to be a man in this country, no Bob Ingersoll, and he would go around from town to town, and that's where this modern day atheistic movement feeds off of, is people like... Uh, Robert Ingersoll, and he'd go around, he'd stand up on a soapbox, and they'd gather a little bunch of people around to hear him, and he'd say, there ain't no God. He would lecture for a little while on how there couldn't be a God, and laughing at the idea of God, and some old guy down here hollered one time, they said, uh, make it good, Bob, there's a lot of us counting on you. Make it good, Bob, there's a lot of us counting. In other words, there was a bunch of people listening to that atheist speak, and what they were saying was, Please tell us there's no God. Because if there is, we are in trouble. Because we're going to face him one day. And by the way, that's what an atheist is. An atheist is a temper tantrum thrown at God. That's basically what atheism is. And an atheist is somebody who has convinced their self there's no God so they can live like they want to without having a guilty conscience. Bottom line. And buddy, we are loaded up with them today. I'm going to let you hear a just a little clip of a of a late some late night uh, show where they sit around they all these late night comedians. You are doing yourself very wrong if you sit up late night and watch comedians. They are led by the devil to make you doubt God and the Bible and what is right. As a matter of fact, humor is a way into a person's heart. You know why a preacher uses humor sometimes? Because it, when people laugh and they they, they open their heart to the truth. And when, when, when these atheists get on stage, there's a bunch of them nowadays, I'm gonna let you hear one, uh, they, they mock God and make fun of God and it's poison. And it poisons their listening audience. Now what we're seeing in America today is this idea of if you're educated, 
If you're an educated, smart American like the rest of us, you couldn't believe the Bible. No, no, no. The only way you can believe the Bible is to be dumb, ignorant, backwood, hillbilly, and they're making you feel like that. They call me a, 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 a hillbilly that don't know what he's talking about. They're half right. I'm a hillbilly that does know what he's talking about. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, they, they, have a, they try to put a guilt trip on us. Ain't that right? That's what they're trying to do and make you doubt God. They put pressure on you. So now you're going to hear, you got it ready? You're going to hear about 20 seconds of this man and to illustrate what I'm going to preach on this morning, mocking God. Go ahead. This is all over America. But there's an invisible man living in the sky who watches everything you do every minute of every day. And the invisible man has a special list of ten things he does not want you to do. And if you do any of these ten things, he has a special place full of fire and smoke and burning and torture and anguish where he will send you to live and suffer and burn and choke and scream and cry forever and ever till the end of time. But he loves you. Ingersoll would be proud of that fool. That man's a fool, people. You don't mock God. As a matter of fact, the Bible said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Now that verse don't say that you can't mock him. That's not what that means, saying you can't mock him. It means if you do, there's gonna be hell to pay one of these days. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. Uh, Darwin, Richard Dawkins, Voltaire would be proud of that man. Bill Mark carries that on. He said that the incarnation, this is a man that's on HBO. I don't have HBO, but I see him on news, on news clips and stuff. And that man gets on TV and makes fun of every story in the Bible. They're obsessed with it. They hate God. They hate him. And they're obsessed with people. Uh, Bill Maher said, I can't believe that 60% of the American people believe in the story of Noah's Ark. That's the silliest story I've ever heard. And then he went on to show his ignorance and saying, how did he get three million animals on the ark? He don't know that. He's, take, he's assuming his audience is ignorant and won't check the facts. And he's, he's uh, making a big, and making people laugh. That's a pressure tactic. That's a brainwashing technique to ruin our generation of mocking God. All thinking men, according to Sigmund Freud, you've heard that name, he said, all thinking men are atheists. Uh, I've got another view on that. I think uh, nobody can think and be an atheist. If you think, you believe everything in the world popped out of nowhere by itself, including the universe, you're not a thinking man. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. I want to say secondly this morning, people mock his word. People mock that Bible and laugh at that Bible from daylight till dark. If you don't believe it, take it to work. Take it to school. Take it to a restaurant. You watch how they'll look at you. I used to take mine to the steakhouse and I put it on that tray, slide down through there, you know where you're going to make your order. And man, they'd look at that thing like it was a rattlesnake. I go, I'm going to bite them or something like that all of a sudden. I said, uh, I, that's a Bible, you know. Insurance men put their books there. They come in. Lawyers bring their books in. Nothing, nothing. Take that book right there in. People mock his word. There's a fellow by the name of Dan Barker. And Dan Barker said this, quote, he said, uh, you believe in a book that turns sticks into snakes and we are the ones that need help? That's what he said. He said, you crazy Christians believe a Bible that says sticks turn into snakes and you believe we need help? Uh, yes, you do need help because you believe the entire universe and solar system come out of nowhere by itself. It takes a lot more faith to believe it all got here by itself than somebody made it. You know what them guys' problem is? They're wicked and they want to live in sin and they know if there's a God, they're going to answer to him one day. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to time to preach on evolution. Ingersoll said this, quote, he said the inspiration of the Bible depends on the ignorance of the person reading it. Wrong again. Uh, he said, uh, uh, he said, uh, when he said this, Einstein, Albert Einstein, as I read science, I soon reach the conviction that much of the Bible could not 
be true. You say, he was Einstein, one of the greatest men. I don't know if he's so great. You know what his contribu contribution to the world was? The atom bomb. Ain't that really helped us? Uh, man, what a contri uh, contribution to society. Uh, but anyway, they mock his word. We mock many times Christians in our daily walk. The brother mentioned it in Sunday school a while ago. When we deliberately ignore the Lord's word, in a sense, we are mocking God. When he says one thing and we just deliver, you parents in here, you say, clean up your room. You come back an hour later, clean up your room. You come back an hour later, clean up your room. And your kid just is laying in there watching TV. They're mocking what you're saying. And when we disobey God, we as Christians are mocking well, God. When we don't pray, God said to pray. When we don't uh, live right, God said to live right. When we don't give, I said something the other night about them, I tithe. I want my heart to be clear as, as my life and my, my giving. When I put my offering in the plate on Sunday morning, I want my heart clear. I don't want to go down to the hospital and pray for my grandbaby like we did down there the other night and feel guilty saying, man, I ain't been giving. I haven't been paying my tithes. I haven't been doing this. I don't want it to live like that. I want to live right so that my conscience will be clear. So when I need to call on him, he'll be there. We mock God when we deliberately disobey his word. Let me say thirdly this morning, that people are mocking sin. In the last days, he said there'll be mockers, mocking sin. Think about that. Mocking sin, isn't that awful? Isn't that horrible? Uh, mocking sin, brother. The Bible said in Proverbs 14, 9, fools make a mock at sin. In other words, sin's nothing to joke about. Example, teenage boys go out on Friday night, get some beer, put it in the back seat, drive down the road, they're all drunk. <laughs> oh, so-and-so, he was drunk. I mean, he threw up and you know, almost wrecked. You know, you know what the Bible said them people are? Fools. Bible said fools make a mock at sin. You go visit the jails. Go visit rehab. Go visit these places where people uh, have sin has already ruined their life. And you'll realize that soon. I, I am I'm shocked and amazed at the Christians who want to flirt with the old life and world just as much as possible. Listen, you forgot where God brought you from. You forgot how bad it was. You forgot what it felt like to be on the road to hell. You forgot what it felt like to have, not have no peace in your heart. Listen, don't mock sin. It ain't nothing to be joking around with. I heard about this guy told me the other day, he said, uh, he said when he, he was dating this girl and he wanted to marry her and he said they had a date. He said they had a date like on a Friday night and he said, uh, he said, uh, I, he said, my, somebody bought me for my birthday some Tommy Hilfiger cologne. And he said, well, I ain't never had nothing that expensive. And he said, I, I spiffed up and I fixed my hair. I put on my clothes clean. I put some of that stuff here and there. You know, he said, I really wanted to impress her. He said, I could not wait until I got there. I was all cleaned up. My car was shiny. And he said, I went over to pick her up. He said, I walked in the house saying, here I am, Brad Pitt the second. You know, I walked, and he said, I walked in there like that. She came in the living room and he said, hey, how are you? And she went, I don't like it. And turned around and walked out. I wouldn't even go out with him. He went, Whew. he said, I'll go home. I'll wash it off. I'll get my regular old spice. He said, I'll, I'll fix up. He said, and her sister came in the room and said, don't you know what, what the problem is? And he said, no, is it that bad? She said, no, no, no. She said her last boyfriend that she was in love with for years and years wore that cologne. And said, when you come in with that smell, all she could think of was him. She said, she don't want to be reminded of that thing. And I thought, you know what? Wouldn't it be, you know what? When, the, when, when you hear them old songs from your old life, when you see where well, a movie flash or see an old flame from a long time ago, you know what a Christian ought to say? I don't like it. And walk off. It reminds me of the old life. There's something wrong with you if you go pick up your old music that you give up when you was right with God and start liking it again. Say amen, folks. Fools make a mock at sin. If it's wrong then, it's wrong now. If it's sinful then, it's sinful now. You gotta get back right with God. Don't mock sin. It ain't nothing to joke about. This is a true story. Preacher told it for a true story. 
You can believe it or not, but he said, this woman called 911. Said, can you please come to my house? And she got her a snake, a pet snake, when she was, when it was little. When it was little, it was little. People get a four-foot python, and it turns into a 12-foot python, then a 15-foot python. And she felt that was her favorite pet, and she called 911. She said, get over here now. My python is trying to eat me. And they got in there, and they, she was down on the floor, and that snake had her arm up to here in its mouth. And they rushed around and everything. She was screaming, help me, help me, help me. And they couldn't get out. They say a snake's teeth is like that, you know. So it hooks, hooks in you. And they said, ma'am, if we pull that thing off, it'll rip your arm all to pieces. They said, the only thing for us to do is cut that snake's head off. And she said, no, no, I love it. I love it. That's my pet. No. Now, you laugh because that woman's a fool, buddy. That's a picture of you holding up that drug. People, you know it's killing you and you won't let it go. You know you're going to die. I preached it last Sunday on the dead end street. It's going to kill you. No, no, you're going to die. I know, but help me. Y'all let go. No, I love it. Fools, make a mocking sin. Number four, mocking God's servants. Let me tell you what the Bible said. In 2 Chronicles 36 and verse 16, it said they mocked the messengers of God and despised his word and mistreated his people until the wrath of the Lord rose against them until there was no remedy. My, 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 my. It is wrong to mock, mock God's servants. I think of all the men that come in and make fun of their old grandma who goes to church and shouts and praises God. Oh, that crazy old religious fanatic and all that. I wouldn't do that if I was you. You know what they did in the Bible? In Acts chapter number two, where the Bible said they got filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said they, they mocked. They mocked them. They mocked them, said these men are drunk. They're full of new ones. They made fun of them. Did you know in Proverbs 17 and verse five, it said, he that mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker. You make in front of poor people. You know, just mock me. Oh, there ain't no poor people. Oh, sorry, good for nothing. He ain't up here with us elite. All my rich friends. You know, there ain't no difference in a rich man and a poor man as far as his soul concerned. Let me tell you something. Just because you got more pieces of green paper than another person's got don't make you any better than they are. Green pieces of paper. And buddy, you'll know it's green pieces of paper when you're staring death in the face and when, uh, when nothing else. It ain't gonna save you then. You don't mock the poor. You don't make fun of people that have less. You don't make fun of people that are maybe not as fortunate or as physically or mentally or anything, anything handicapped in any way. Uh, I heard about this boy, this kid, um, uh, he got in trouble and his mama come in, found out what he'd done. She said, all right, boy, and she was just a blessing him out. You better straighten up. And his brother was standing right behind his mama. And she'd go, you better straighten up. And he was back there going, <laughs> mocking his mom. And his mom was saying, I'm going to beat you right to death. And he'd be back there, I'm going to beat you right to death. <laughs> and his brother was looking at it, and she'd turn, she'd turn around, and he'd go, but he didn't see there was a mirror right over here on the wall. <laughs> and in that mirror, she could see that little brat mocking her. And I'll leave you right to finish the story which of them, one of them got the worst whipping. I'm telling you, brother, listen, you don't mock your parents, you don't mock your mom and dad, you don't mock God, you don't mock his word, you don't mock sin, you are getting yourself in trouble. Finally, number five, and I'll be done. They mocked the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. In Matthew 27, verse 29, this is what the Bible said. The Bible said when they took Jesus out there and they was gonna crucify him, here's why God's angry with this world. They platted a crown of thorns on his head and put a reed in his right hand and the Bible said they bowed the knee to him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Now think about that. You think about that. Not somebody out there in a trailer park smoking pot. These are religious leaders. These are the most so-called holy people of his day. 
put a reed in his hand. Oh, you're a king, huh? Here's your thorn. Here's your crown. King got to have a crown. Bam! Blood running down the face of Jesus Christ. Them thorns was that long. They said it stuck down in his face. And then they bowed their knee and said, <laughs> they mock you of king of the Jews. <laughs> Hail, king of the Jews. Look, everybody. Look at the king of the Jews. Listen, them same people one day will come up in the resurrection of the unjust and their knee really will bow. And they'll confess that he's the son of God. Listen, it's a bad thing to mock God, people. It's a bad thing. I, I'll just throw this in. I don't see how a Christian can sit and watch a movie where they mock Jesus Christ through the whole thing. You say, well, it's it's got a good story in it and it's got a good plot and I, I know it makes fun of Jesus. Turn that stupid thing off. I don't want to like no, nothing that mocks Jesus Christ, my Savior. Something wrong with you. Get your entertainment some other way. Go fishing. Amen. Build your kids a tire swing. Do something constructive with your life. Amen right there. That's right, brother. Uh, for all you people out there in the world that listen to this, that means you hang a rope out of a tree and put a tire on it and your kids swing back and forth on it for you uneducated people. You know what John Lennon said? John Lennon said, quote, back in the 60s, talking about the Beatles, we are more popular than Jesus. He said, Christianity will go. It will vanish and shrink. He said, I'm not, I needn't argue about that. I'm right and I'll be proved right. Look at him now. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Bullet through the head, brother, and he's in hell right now. You say, how do you know? Because, down, 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 a little, down, down. Imagine there's no heaven. And if John Lennon didn't get saved, he's on his way to the lake of fire in eternity. In hell now. You don't mock Jesus Christ. The Bible said during the tribulation, Revelation 16, verse 9, and the people were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God because of their pain and repented not. That's the society we're living in right now. The society we're living in now says, look, if he's, gonna put, if he's that mean, I hate him. I hate God. They hate him. They hate the Lord Jesus Christ. In flame and fire, he's coming, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Revelation 19, 11 said, heaven will be open. The white, uh, the white horse will come and he cometh to judge and make war with them on the earth. You know what Proverbs 4 said? The Lord said, I'll mock when your fear cometh. I'll laugh at your calamity. So one day, they'll say, Lord, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. And he'll mock them. He'll laugh. He said, I don't believe in a God like that. Suit yourself. Your choice. I'm telling you, fools, mock God. Are you listening? I'm going to tell you something, I'm through. If you, this is for the Christians. I heard a preacher say the other day, he went to a motel. And he went to the motel, and now, now they don't give you a key, you know, when you go to a motel. The one I'm going to this week still uses keys. But they give you a card like that, right? So they can program it and everything. People can't, if you, if you steal it or something, it's, it wires out or whatever after a couple of days or every how long you go over And you stick it in that thing, bam, door opens. He said it was late at night. He'd been traveling and he got all his stuff. He got the key from the guy. He had to go walk up steps. Is it one of them where they all on the outside, you don't have a hallway. You know, all the rooms are just... You walk out and there's the wild blue yonder. That's like where I'm going to be this week. And uh, where I'm going to be this week, they got a sign out front that says, no drugs allowed. Police come through every And they do. I've been out there at 12 o'clock at night and watched them. It's exciting. The pillows are this thick. I put five of them there and make one because I like a big pillow. And you know what? He went up there, got all his luggage upstairs, stuck that thing in, and it wouldn't work. There's all his luggage. Are you going to leave it there? He had to go all of it back down there. He said, man, you make this thing work. He said, sorry, sir. And he said, uh, I tried to make the key work. You know how they are. And he said, uh, fix it. He walked back up there, took all his luggage Got it there again, stuck it in there, and it still didn't work. 
Man, by this time, he was mad. He came down and he said, look, buddy, I dragged my luggage up through there twice. Now, you going to help me get this thing? He said, let me see, where you, where you put that card? And he was sticking that card in his pocket right beside his cell phone. And, you know, that's happened to me before. There's something in a cell phone that will demagnetize your card. Anybody ever had that happen to you? I have. And it'll, it can demagnetize that card where it don't work. He said, program it again. Took it up there, bam, it opened the door. Now, I'm going to tell you something, people. That cell phone's a picture of the world. And God will bless you and set you on fire. You'll go out here today trying to do right, and you'll put it right back up against that world. It'll demagnetize you. It'll take, the door won't open. The door won't open that God was going to open for you. You know why? Because you won't get away from that world. It ain't a joke. It ain't a mock. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We're living in a time of last day's mockers. God help us to get it right, keep it right. While we can, let's stand by our head for prayer. Heads bowed. Eyes are closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's talking. No one's looking around. Please, don't, don't move. Stay right where you're at. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. She's playing softly. Just a minute. We'll sing a verse of song. We'll sing a verse of just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come. How about it this morning, friend? God speaking to your heart, staying too close to that world, playing around with sin, come and get your heart right this morning. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd speak to every single heart here today. Do what ought to be done in our lives. God will thank you and praise you for it. Help that man, that woman, that boy, that girl who needs to come to come today. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Say them all. Say it now. You need to come this morning, come. Come and get down on your altar and say, God, I'm giving this all to you. Come on, friend. Come on, friend. Here comes one. You ladies pray for this girl. Men, come pray with this man coming right here. First time they've ever been here. Needs help this morning. Man needs help. Some of y'all come around here and pray with him. Amen. Amen. That's right. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on, fellas. Come on, Gary. Pray for this guy. Just help him. You need help this morning. Come on. Don't wait. Come right now. Amen. 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 Thank God. Oh, Lamb, say it now. Of God. Amen. Let's sing it. Let's sing another verse. Sing it now. Just as I am, thou wilt receive. Sing it now. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Don't mock God, friend. That's a big mistake. Believe, oh Lamb of God, I come. I come. Say it now. Amen. One more verse. Just as I am without one plea. Amen. But that thy yes. blood yes. was shed yes. for me. Yes. And that Amen. thou be Thank the Lord. to thee, O Lamb Amen. of God, I come. Still praying this morning, getting things right. 
Bible says like this, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. One thing that's wrong with our country, we lost the fear of God in this nation. I'm telling you, he ain't messing around. God loves you. He is love. The, mo- the greatest love in the world is God's love. But he is not messing around, y'all. He means business. He means business. And so should we. So should we. I'm all about joking and having fun. I'm all for that. But not when it comes to the things of God. Amen, sir. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Everything about right with the Lord. Amen. Y'all pray for this man. This one y'all met on bus route. They met him on bus route. Isn't that something? Bless your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I believe in the bus ministry. I believe it. It works. It works. We need help in it too. We need some help. All right. All right. Now, we're going to do one more thing before we go this morning. It's still early. Uh, bring them over here. Uh, we, this morning, are going to take up an offering for Brother Jim. Brother Jim don't charge for his work, but you, that thing I probably don't get set eight miles a gallon. He, he lives in that thing, traveling from church to church, helping him. If we'd have hired a, a crew, he'd done that by himself with our men, Jeremy, all these men coming, Eddie, Jim, a bunch of us coming here. We, we've been down here working. We got some work done this week, y'all. Eric, well, Eric's gone on vacation, but he worked. Some other men that I went to, he's up here cleaning till 9 o'clock last night. I mean, there's a lot been done here in a few days' time. It would have cost a fortune. So let's give him something. If you get, everybody ought to give him You got kids get baptized right here. You got grandkids get baptized right here. So let's pull out something and give it to Brother Jim this morning and send him on his way. Uh, y'all go ahead, take it off down there, write a check to the church, and we'll.